and the, the, the art historians and the conservationists and the curators, they've all disappeared, they've all gone underground. They never knew, knew each other by name, they worked in this Louvre just with kind of pseudonyms because sadly because of copyright conservation of old art pieces was illegal. Um, and so now also this community has been dispersed, these all, all the French art historians. But it's not French, it's global. All the art historians of the Louvre, they, they, their first task is to find each other again because they it's a bit, it's, it's a bit, like, it's, and you're an, you're, an, you're an art historian or a curator or an art student and you're, if you just happen to be at a hacker conference on the next night, no? When everyone says, like, oh, the Louvre, I don't know, are you asking about it, or they say, I don't know, too expensive, or someone is going to say, yeah, Louvre, it doesn't matter, maybe it doesn't matter so much, I have a good print of the digital copy of the Mona Lisa on my mother or something, so, something sad, something really sad happened on the internet, so yes, and I'm, I'm talking about this because it's not unrelated to, to what we do. A lot of what you're going to see, I mean, a lot of what you're going to see is, is, um, is in a way based on an approach to doing stuff online. It's the question, what could you do with cinema online, if the first question is not, but what about copy? It can be the third question, or the fifth question, or in our case maybe the seventeenth question, or a question that's kind of... If the first question is a different question then, but what about copyright? We can ask, I'm happy to talk about that question also if in the course of, of, the, of this, this, this presentation here, but the, the, I think one of the, one of the main one of the kind of core characteristics of what Jan and me have produced over the last years in this, up under this avatar is, um, is, is, yeah, is what could you do on the internet if copyright wasn't the first concern. And if you could do it, then you maybe also can. If you can imagine what you could do, then maybe you can not. It's always from a software engineer, or from we both program, we both do software, then maybe sometimes you can also ask the question, oh, if we could do it, then why don't we just do it? But I get it right. Then it's to produce. Um, so ZeroXDB, this is a, this is a website, it's zeroxdb.org. Um, it stands for nothing. It's a, it's, it's a, we, we started this and it's an, it's an online, it's an online database, an online archive, an online resource for cinema. Um, it's 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 a bit based. It, it, we, we did it in we first launched it in 2007, and it's 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 it springs from our frustration with how online movie archives usually look. I mean, you know, I don't I'm not going I don't have to show you. You know how YouTube looks. You probably know how the national, I don't know, but how the website of the National Greek Film Archive looks, or the, I don't know, but I've seen many National Film Archive websites, and I've, in a way they all share some threads. Um, YouTube, it's like television, you have a video, and then you have stuff you like, and then something plays next. Um, and you can skip the ad if you like or not, and these, these, all these items in the archive have certain attributes, in the case of the National Film Archive, the main attribute of the items is that they're not available or not readily available or that it's really complicated to get them. Or that so we, we, we thought in 2007, we had an occasion, we had a bit of time to think about um, uh, how, how, I mean, actually, the, the, the OECD, how would you do it? Actually, OECD still to this day, we wrote this back then, almost 10 years ago, um, we, we, we called it we said OXDB is a zero XDB is an experimenter and to some degree imaginary movie database. So the thing is, even though this is practical and functions and it's online and you can go home and use it and stuff, it's I think it's for us back then and I think still it's important that it's also an imaginary it's an imaginary thing. It's not just a tool. It's not just a thing that has certain kind of. Uh, where we have certain goals or criteria that we want to fulfill and then we implement something that then works. But this is definitely also a space that is intended to, um, to 
challenge our beliefs about what cinema on the internet or an archive uh, could look like. So in that sense, it's something that's that's um, that's. It's, it's, it's conceptual, if you will, or it's, a, it's, a, it's not just a tool, it's also a tool for looking at things a bit differently and challenging your, your, beliefs, about, your beliefs about how cinema online can work. So I'm going to show you a couple of aspects of, of, of this, of what we've done, um, of what, what, these, what our problems were with, with cinema online and what we thought were some basic, really banal, minimal things that cinema online should be and um, after that Jan is going to show you a couple of other things um, that we've done with the same system because in the end we thought like, okay this is not just this is not a presentation of a project we're doing like this is our the, or the series CD is, a, is our whatever it's our piece or our, our kind of our thing but we spend quite some time to I mean, we don't, we always produce, when we produce software, we produce open source software, but we, we spend quite some time to make this a platform that is available for other people to use, be it the ranges from, from film studies and universities in, in India to activists in Istanbul or Cairo, and um, Jan is going to show you a bit of that as well. So um, what sucks about what sucks about what is what is what, what is so bad about digital digital cinema? We know it from the DVD, you know, the DVD, the last or the Blu-ray, whatever you like. That's the last physical medium. That this is the last physical medium of film in the history of film. The, after the DVD and Blu-ray, you only have there's Amazon and Netflix as these kind of systems. You have to be online to watch film. You have to pay. You have to pay a subscription. That's the 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 future. The, the, the future is sealed, if you will. But with the with the DVD and the and Blu-ray, what's the problem? You can't imagine you have an archive of DVDs. You have a thousand DVDs. How do you find something? No? How do you? So you take a DVD. You take the you find the DVD and you then you put it in the DVD. You can't really skip. You can't really search. There are kind of chapters that are not really the organization of of of, of film that you'd expect. You can't. It's insanely complicated, even though all, all this is digital data, to get to a point where you can handle it. Imagine the book, you know, the, you have a library, you have a library of books. Each book conveys, am I a thick book or a thin book? Is it a long text or a short text? Just because it's a, just the object. You can flip through a book. If you remember a page, a, a quote in the book, often you remember it was on the left page on top. If you flip through a book, you just, your, your thumbs and your fingers know if you're at the beginning of a book or at the end of the book. All this, the, the, the DVD is completely opaque. Looking at a DVD, you don't even know if it still works. You don't even know if there's anything on it. It's a fully opaque uh, uh, medium, even though it claims to be digital film. So we thought some of these things must change. So once you have, this is, so Zero's TV is an online database of 15,000 films um, that, um, that we put on there. You can also watch these films actually online, but that's not the main focus of the site. It's not a streaming site, it's not a pirate site, it's, not, it's more a site about cinema as such. So, um, um, what, are the, what are the minimal things that we thought well, one could do better? Film, I mean, banality, but film is a visual media. If you think of the Book. Like, can you do something navigation of a film? Can you? What? What? How do you do this? How do you? Is there? Could there be an equivalent of, of spatial navigation of a book or of a library? Hey, could you? Could 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 a film also give these properties away? I'm a long film. I'm a short film. I mean, this is the beginning of the film, this is the end of the film. Could there be something better than just, I mean, this is what it looks from. Could there be something better than just a list of, you know, a list of, a list of items, um, an endless list of items, or whatever I saw them, I would always see television series. Could, could it be, I mean, these are all fabulous, many of these films are fabulous films, no, but could there be, what does it give? No, this looks like a shrine, this looks like a, this looks like a, what could you do? 
So once you have digital film, you actually have what is a digital film? A digital film is, is um, like as an object, like for, as, a, as a thing. It's pixels times pixels times time. It's a loaf. It's like a loaf of bread. It's a, it's a, it's 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 a three D structure. Now it's pixels times pixels, which is an image over time, which is the third dimension. It is a it is a as a digital object. It's relatively clear to how you handle it. It has a beginning. It has an end. It has this. It's a now, if, if once the film is digital, it should be trivial to do something like this, no? Like this is how, um, this is a, it's just a selection of, this is a sub-selection of, this is just a list here of a couple of films. So this is how films, this is one of the ways how, how a film would look on Xerox TV. Um, what is this? We call it a timeline. This is basically, this was back nine years ago. This is really old stuff, no? Like the idea of, of how could a film be represented uh, better, if you will. So how does this work? This is basically in this resolution. You can see it in different resolutions a bit later. This is each pixel here. So this is all. each pixel here is one second of film. And what we basically what we do is basically we compress it so that it becomes just we compress the frame. If we take the average of that second and make it just uh, make it just uh, uh, one line, one line of uh, what you realize. I mean, I don't know if you know these. If you if these are films you've seen, or if there's some films you know. Sometimes people, I don't know. How do you find out if Three Master Three is actually a dark? Maybe you remember it's relatively dark. No, it's relatively dark. Maybe you've forgotten about this bright face here, but yeah. Um, who of you has seen, knows James Benning, the filmmaker James Benning? Does anyone of you know this guy? American filmmaker. Yeah, you know James Benning. Assume you don't know James Benning. So here are three films by James Benning. And I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't watch movies anymore. I'm not saying this is going to replace watching movies. Not, not at all. I'm just saying, like, assume you don't have the time to watch James Benning now. Or assume you just want to have fun. Like, even if you haven't seen James Benny, just by looking at that, you get a pretty good idea about some structure, uh, some some structural properties of the cinema of James Benny. These are over time long. These are long static shots. It's relatively clear that something like this is a horizon, or this is a horizon. What's ten skies? Looking at this, it's obviously it's it's clearly ten skies, and you see that there's a red, that it's the same principle. There's some black and white. There's some, but it's it's, it's shorter it's shorter segments, but it's totally clear. And I mean, you can click on this, and you will see the. I don't have this on. I can do it. To So you, I mean, if you want to see it in the in the lower left corner, you can also see that frame. You can see the sky. You can see what's in the middle of this shot, and then there will be a horizon, I think. And the truck is passing by. Some trucks are passing by. So there's there's two things. No, it lets you navigate a film. You can navigate. I mean, you can see this also with the video player a bit later. This is a form of navigating a film, but it's also a way of looking at a film at a glance and having an idea of, of, of some of its most basic properties. This, this uh, Jonas Dahlberg makes structural videos, video art. This is a very kind of stru very, st very strong repeating structure, as, as Stevie Ball's first film, which is just black and white, and there's the proof, it's really just black and white. Colored, colored black and white film. Um, you get to see Flatland, this is an animated film, it's very blue. You can see cutting frequencies, you can see that Song's Lama by Hans Frampton has really kind of high frequency changes. You see the relatively, relatively uncommon structure for a film under the skin. Um, you see, I'll scroll up later, you, 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 you see a couple of things that a DVD or the National Film Archive doesn't really give you. Um, now, 
Now, looking at this, um, these are the two films that Monica Godard made in 1967. Two or three things she was she was on weekend, and um, I mean I don't know, but you can see, or I think one can see. You have to look a bit. It's not something that's immediately evident, but you can see that there seems to be a common structure in this film. And then you can think about what this common structure is. Mm -hmm. Is it the kind of the black, the short black periods that appear in between the intertitles? Is it the primary colors? There's a there's a clear structure that you see in comparison to a lot of um, of the rest. Um, of what's in of what's in this uh, list of films, you you can I think you can make a make a make a make an argument about a type of cinema just from just from um, looking at the structure here. So it's not just navigation, or that you can easily have forgotten what the red stuff is in two or three things. It's a red mini Cooper, or what this red stuff is. The sign that says parks, or that says boutique somewhere. Um, you can, you can verify these things, but um, it's not just navigation, it's also kind of a, a, a fingerprint, a digital preview of a, a preview of a structure that can take things away. You see in many cases, you can see a zoom on this thing. You see when the camera zooms in, you can see a zoom in <coughs> and a zoom out. So this is obviously, for example, this bit here, this must be a zoom in because something that's small in the beginning ends up being larger uh, a few seconds, 20 seconds later. Um, now, you can even look at this more, more precisely. So on the XTV we have all this metadata, the IMDb style. You can search for the things that you can search in a film archive and trivia and who the, who the, direct, who the, the, the list of cast and what the, who, what the names of the characters are, etc. But um, let's look at this timeline a bit more closely. Um, let's see if I'm going to permit this. So um, one of the things you see, this is now a different type of timeline. So this is one um, where we don't just compress the whole film and put it in one frame. It's higher resolution here. Every pixel, each pixel is actually one frame, not just one second. And what we do here is we basically throw everything away other than the center pixel of the film, the center pixel of the, the center of the screen, which is exactly the same as a slit scan, as what you, could, as what you can do with an analog slit scan camera, which is just a slit where you, that, that records movement across it. Um, this is amazing for, for this, I don't, know, it's a, it's a, I don't know if it's useful, but it's kind of amazing for for scenes that have a lot of horizontal movement, we can happens to have this uh, very long uncut traffic jam in the in the right in the middle of it. Um, and what you see, and if you want, you can also play it. You know, you can put the play here, and then you can play it on the thing. Um, what you see is that we're just taking the center of the film with a lot of horizontal movement. The whole film, the, the actually the whole this whole traffic jam will have written itself onto this thing. Um, so, so even without playing it, you get a, you get a, you get time projected onto space, and you can watch it from like this. And if you, if you were wondering what what type of what type of what brand what brand uh, appeared in the film, yeah, it's Shell, and you can see it already on the timeline. Um, it's it's. Um, and sometimes, sometimes these are very kind of abstract renderings. Sometimes you see a person run in front of a house. You know, it's very, it's, it's really like more, more of a slit scan type of type of thing. Um, the what, what, what would happen with the slit scan camera? And then there's more panorama. There's sheep in this film, even though we're not even watching. Oh, it. <laughs> so different types of different different type of. Uh, Different type of navigation, and you can also just, I mean, if you, if you see the clear, you can also just use this to navigate, and you have the subtitles here. 
this can be a, I'm, 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 I find it crazy that this doesn't exist and when the video players we're using on our computer that this thing is not there because it's so absolutely amazing because you know, okay, a couple of seconds later this will end and this will come, it gives you so much context and it gives you not just context in an abstract sense but in an actual, actual visual kind of visual sense. So that was one thing. Next thing was um, 15,000 films in this archive, it's just too many. How are you ever going to find something? No? How are you ever going to? Um, why can't you search in film? How could you search in film? So with digital films, you often have, you often have subtitles. So let's leave this list. These are all 14,000. It's too many, but um, if you, um, let's search for something like, I don't know, trivial cinema. Um, and now you find 2,000 movies that have some cinema in the title or maybe some cinema in the description or maybe someone... So it's not very useful to search like this, to have this kind of key words and... Yeah, the, the 39 steps, that's about cinema, but it's not eight and a half yeah, cinema. It's kind of technological, but what about you can search for cinema actually in the subtitles of the films? And what about we switch this to timelines again? Um, so, a search for cinema in this case is no longer a search for an abstract keyword that someone has, so someone has tapped the film and, keyword and, and cinema appears, but this is actually. Inshallah, if the internet gives us, let's uh, just wait for, wait for a moment. Um, this is now actually a search that will produce time based results. Um, so, in, in, in um, usually in all our presentations, all the examples are the DAR. Let's maybe stick with that rule. So, in All the Boys Are Called Patrick, which is a very early DAR. Cinema appears here at seven minutes into the film, and you see this highlighted on the timeline. You see the highlight just as you would see a highlight in your text. Uh, we could all go to the cinema together. Um, cinemato cinematographer, okay, it's, it's something that appears in the title. So when it's in the beginning of the film, it's, it's, it's off in the title. Here it would be a title as well, cinematography by. But there are maybe more interesting cases than these. As the leader of the new Brazilian cinema, this is uh, a way to know the beast. Brazilian cinema. Mm -hmm. Cinema is like magic. We have no idea what we're filming. So um, I think this is fantastic. This is, this is much better than, 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 this is much better than just search because you see where something appears on the film and if you want to switch this to and another view, you want to view this as clips, then um, you actually get, this may again also take a tiny moment to go, but it's there. Um, this is 1,700 clips where someone says cinema in the film, or where cinema is in the subtitles. And this is all of them. And each of these things here, this is not just some stupid icon where you can't see anything. Each of these is a video player. If you click on this, it will play and it will play, let's see. Um, just not now that we're presenting it, of course, but... Um, this. And if you double-click on it, you get to the, you get to the film at that exact moment. You get the highlight here on the timeline, you get the invention of cinema, near the shadow moon. Um, at the right place in the film, at the correct place in the film, if you want to know where this is, um, you click on this, it's just, you, you see the, you see all the subtitles here on the left side, let's deselect this. If you want to send someone a link to, hey, there's this great, great part with um, uh, this, this, this great conversation in this film, what you do is send it to someone like this, this is the URL, so it's the dot of this is the ID of the film, the IDB ID, and this is the time code. This is the link to this position of the film. Works for everyone. It's just film, time code, done. Um, uh, 
So it's also a way to dress for.